Hey there, this is Pamela. I just wanted to go over my method and recipe for making my royal icing for you guys. I got a lot of requests for it, so here's the video. So in my bowl, I have four ounces of warm water. And to that, I have added four tablespoons of meringue powder. Now, not all meringue powders are created equal. I happen to like this particular brand. Um, some taste better than others. Some just work better than others. So play around, see what's available in your area, and see what works best for you. So I added that to my water, and then you just want to whisk it ever so slightly. I've already done that here where we're just incorporating that meringue powder and the water together just a little bit, just until it's all moistened, um, and to make sure there's no big clumps in there. Little clumps are okay, big clumps, not so good. Now, now that we have this together, we're now going to add three tablespoons of light corn syrup. Now, what the corn syrup does is it allows the royal icing to set but when you bite into it, it's soft and it's tender, more like a meringue. And that's what we call a soft bite. So it still lets you create flowers, um, all of those hard little decorations that you don't want to smash. They are strong enough to stack and to package, but yet when you go to bite it, it's just a little easier on the teeth. So you add the uh, three tablespoons of light corn syrup. Now I just go ahead and add all of these liquids together and then mix it. So you'll see I've got my corn syrup there. And now I'm gonna add three teaspoons of a combination of my favorite extracts. It's a combination of vanillas um, and uh, emulsions, if you will, oil emulsions. So you want three teaspoons of flavoring. You can use almond, lemon, strawberry, it doesn't matter. It's, this is your icing. So you make it whatever flavor you want and you like. <laughs> now, the only other thing I'm going to add to this before I add my powdered sugar, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of white liquid gel food color. I happen to use the same brand, um, but AmeriColor has a lot of um, really good um, colorings you can use, but this one in particular, it's inexpensive. You can find it on Amazon, relatively easy, and I've used them for years. So we're gonna add a full teaspoon of this, approximately, well, approximately a teaspoon. I'm just gonna, I've been doing this a while, I'm gonna eyeball it, but, we add it because just like creating a piece of art on a canvas, you want to prime the canvas before you add your colors. You do that to prepare the surface. I feel like the white gel color in the base of your icing will make your colors pop and stand out and also helps with the colors not bleeding into each other. It doesn't lighten your colors. It just gives them this solid sort of gessoed base, if you will, to go ahead and add your colors. And they'll definitely pop better if you use this white gel in there. I highly recommend it. So I'm going to add approximately a teaspoon in there. Like I said, I've been doing this a while, so I just kind of eyeball it. Now I put this on the mixer. We're gonna mix it up a little bit before I add my powdered sugar. You just want all those ingredients to kind of incorporate. Now, I use actual real vanilla in part of my flavoring, and it does have a very light tan color to the icing, but it actually goes away and becomes white once I add the powdered sugar. So don't freak out if it looks a little brownish at first. That pow adding the powdered sugar really does brighten it up quite a bit. So at this point, I just mixed it a little bit to get that whole slurry of liquid ingredients in, uh, combined. And now I'm gonna add all at one time the entire two pound bag of powdered sugar. I don't sift it. 
I don't do it in sections. I add it all in one swoop. Just like so. Now, the key to royal icing, low and slow. So we're going to mix this just a little bit until we have it mostly incorporated and just wet. You want all of that powdered sugar wet. So now that it's all wet, I'm going to set my timer now for six minutes. I'm not going to scrape. I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to let this go at the slow speed it's doing now for six minutes. You have to do this step. For some reason, doing this helps give it a really good structure after it's been thinned out. And that's when you see people who get the puff happening on their cookies. That's because they've taken the time to go low and slow and really build up the strength of their icing. Now, icing wants to dry out, of course. So if, if in this process you notice your edges starting to get a little dry, you can do one of two things. You can either do what I do, which is give it just a quick little tiny spritz in the bowl on the surface every now and then during that six minutes. Or you can wet some paper towels and drape it over this to help keep that moisture in there. Either method, perfectly fine, whatever works for you. I'm gonna stop this. We're not gonna wait that full six minutes, but I just wanted to show you this is some icing that I made earlier. Now, I added a little bit more water to it because I'm actually gonna end up making flood out of this particular batch. But you can add more water in the beginning if you'd like. If you know you're gonna need a really thin consistency for your cookies, go ahead and add it to your main batch and save your arm the trouble of mixing and mixing and mixing. If you can do that, short, that, that shortcut, go for it. Otherwise, if you need your icing thicker, just take the section you need and add some powdered sugar and mix it as you go along. Well guys, that's all I have for now. So stay tuned and hopefully I can get you guys some more videos. Thank you.